Hey up, it's Steve from that old Yorkshire Geek and it's Friday night, which means it's appointment with fear night and we've got a double bill tonight. My two favourite Hammer Dracula films, Dracula AD 1972 and The Satanic Rites of Dracula. So let's hit the intro and then we can have a look at them. Right, I'm back. So, as I said, a double bill to uh, Dracula films. I'm doing these as a double bill because they're actually the follow-on. Like, Satanic Rites is a sequel to Dracula AD 1972. They all kind of follow on. It's like loosely, all the Hammer Dracula films. But these two are definitely connected because one references uh, the other uh, directly, even though there are some, uh, well, one major cast change uh, between uh, between films, which is a shame, but uh, right, we'll uh, we'll 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 get the first one up. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, go on, follow me on my social medias, and all that stuff. It'd be very much appreciated. Right, let's get Dracula AD 1972 up. Uh, I was going to say something about this, and I forgot what it was. Um, never mind. <laughs> right, here we go. A Hammer production. There we go. So we start off. Obviously, as I say every week, I'm not going to just play the film because I get in all sorts of trouble for that. So we're just going to go through it and I'll talk about it and give you my thoughts on the production, as they say. So we start off. We don't start off in 1972. The film starts off in 1872. And we see a carriage uh, riding through the woods and across a bridge. I think that's quite a famous. I think that's on, um, is it the Bray Studios grounds or whatever? I don't know. But anyway, what happens is it's Draclia um, and Van Elsin are fighting to the death. And then we see this chap riding along, chasing them. And anyway, the carriage crashes and comes to a sudden halt. And... Um, there we go. And we see uh, Dracula comes out. Oh, no, that's uh, Van Helsing. He's got uh, some injuries. Peter Cushing, by the way, and Christopher Lee in their iconic roles. And then we see uh, Dracula's got one of the uh, carriage wheels impaled on him. And so Van Helsing finishes him off, as we'll see. I'll just play this bit. Finishes him off, pushes the uh, the broken wheel through the vampire's heart. And uh, to see him off, um, and then promptly uh, collapses and dies. So that's the end of, um, I can't remember which one he is, the Abraham Van Helsing, I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, this chap arrives, he's played by Christopher Neem, who you may have seen in, oh, I don't know, he's been in Star Trek and all sorts of things, and other films. You'll know his face. Um... There's also been in Star Wars, but in a Star Wars video game. It was in the uh, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight uh, video game. In the because that one had remember that one had um, like live action cutscenes. So he played he played the main baddie in that. Did Christopher Neem. Uh, but anyway, there we see Dracula um, turn into dust as he does when you impale him through the heart. And there we see uh, Van Helsing uh, about to pop his clogs. Yeah, he's going to collapse to the ground. Um, I can't remember which one he is. <sighs> I think the one in 1972, I think, is Lawrence Van Helsing. I think this one might be Abraham Van Helsing. I don't know. It tells us in a minute anyway. Well, in a bit. Because we see his gravestone. Right, so Christopher Neem takes Dracula's ring and pops it on his own finger. On his, his, his wedding finger. Uh, well, it's on the right hand. I know it's the third finger left hand, but he puts it on the third finger right hand. Does that have any significance? I don't know. But he does that. And uh, as you see there, as you can see. And then he scoops up some of Dracula's uh, ashes into a, a little vial, a little glass thing that he just happened to have on him. Maybe he expected this to happen, I don't know. But there we see Van Helsing's dead. Um, and then we cut to um, the modern day. Oh, no, we don't. I'm lying. I forgot. Uh, then um, this is... Uh, we find out his name later. Uh, well, 
not his name, his, uh, his descendant's name. Because in Hammer films, all descendants look identical to their ancestors for some weird reason. <laughs> Uh, it's called Alucard, but I don't think that's his real name. I think he's just taken that name because it's Dracula backwards. But um, anyway, it's, it's watching uh, the 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 funeral, the burial of uh, Van Helsing, and then and then I think we cut to the uh, we cut to the gravestone. There's actually a, quite a good thing. Ah, the, ah, this one's Lawrence. So which is the new one then? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, we see it's Lawrence Van Helsing. I oh, was wrong. Uh, the one in. Um, Modern times is Lorimer Van Helsing, which is a peculiar name, but uh, there you go. So there you go. So there he goes. Died September eighteenth, eighteen seventy-two. Resquiat in pace ultima. I think that means rest in ultimate peace or rest in final peace, something like that. Tells us at the end of the film. Uh, but as you can see there, um, the gravestone. You see the bottom of the writing there, and the gravestone. It's all exposed, but then we cut. To 1972, cut to 100 years later, and we'll see in a minute. <laughs> in a minute. In a minute, as we watch the uh, the grave, the coffin go into the grave, and into the Holy Ghost, as they, as they say. Um, oh, by the way, um, this chap, uh, Christopher Neem, he, he buries Dracula's uh, ashes outside the cemetery. In the ground. Don't know why, but he just does. Well, I do know why, because it shows later, but he, he's still got some of it in his uh, his little vial, but he put some of it outside. Not all of it. You don't need all of Dracula's ashes to have him rise from the grave. But anyway, never mind. Uh, there we go. We have Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. See, I've gone too far now. Look. Gone too far now. Back a little bit further. See, I've spoiled the surprise now, haven't I? So I'm going to have to just, just let it play. There you go, he sets off now. He's done his, done his thing. Oh, he's put the uh, part of the stake as well. He's put that there as well. There's some sort of marker, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, there. Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing in. And then we cut to... Actually, I think we just cut to that. What I've just seen, <laughs> what we just saw, the, the the plane. Oh, no, 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 I'm lying. This is what we're waiting for. We see the gravestone again, and we see a 100 years has passed, and see there's no gap between the bottom of that part and the and the uh, the soil, which I thought were a nice little touch, because, as you know, things either sink or the earth around builds up, doesn't it? Uh, you can see that on my bloody garden path, I tell you. It's getting, it's getting higher on either side, the grass. What am I supposed to do? Dig it out, I suppose. Anyway, but never mind. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, so there we're now. We're in, uh, we're in 1972. There we go. It says Dracula. And then it... Uh, we, we pan away. We pan up into the sky. We see an aeroplane. Yeah. Dracula AD 1972. Copyright 1972. MCML XXII. Hammer Film Productions Limited. All rights reserved. So there you go, so now you know we're in modern days now, or 50 years ago. It's the 50th anniversary, I've just realised, of this film. So that's quite uh, appropriate, isn't it, that we're looking at it. Uh, so there we go, so we see, um, and it's got a cool theme as well. I can't play the theme though, by the way, because this, what I'm looking at here, has no... Oh, it does! No, 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 I'm thinking of... Um, I'm thinking of uh, Satanic Rites as a cool theme, and but I can't play that... Um, uh, I don't think this has a cool theme. Let's have a listen, eh? Wow, this has a pretty cool, you know, theme, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll just leave it there. I don't want to get into trouble. Uh, there's a few stars in it, by the way, you might have seen. There we go, Carolyn Munro, the lovely Carolyn Munro. Uh, some of the famous names. Uh, Michael Kitchen is quite famous. He's been in quite a lot of stuff. So anyway, you we're in modern times. All right, introducing Stone Ground with the songs Alligator Man and You Better Come Through. And uh, they feature heavily. I don't know why, at the beginning of the film, they feature quite heavily. Maybe they were friends of the production team. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe I think maybe they were supposed to be you know, the next big thing and they never were. Uh, but it's quite a cool tune. Um but uh, here we go, so we're starting off already, we're at a party somewhere in Swinging London in 1972, 
Um, it's all very, you know, hippie beatnik stuff. And I suspect this might have been written a few years before, you know, in the swinging 60s, but, you know, but in 1972. But they're all, it's all man and, yeah, dude and all that. And uh, as you'll hear, it's... Uh, there you go. So that's that. So they're playing, they're actually at a, like a posh party. There's lots of old elderly people about. And uh, the young chap whose party it is, it's very plum in his mouth, uh, accented. All, oh, I don't know who half of these people are. I just invited the stone ground. And so... Uh, so they end up calling the police. We see there's uh, Stephanie Beecham and Carolyn Munro's there, and Christopher Neem is there, but uh, presumably as a different character, because uh, it's a hundred years later. And he does mention later; it is mentioned that his uh, his line has served Dracula well. So he's obviously a, a descendant of the chap we saw at the beginning. That's the young fella whose uh, party it is. It's all it's all both dicky bows and and uh, dinner suits. <laughs> But yeah, he invites a, a rock group. I don't know. To have playing. What were they going to? What were they expecting? But apparently, uh, there she is. The lovely Steph- Stephanie Beecham. The beautiful Stephanie Beecham, I'd go so far as saying. Um, her and her, her boyfriend and, and Christopher Neem and all these others. They're, they're, a, they're a group of people. They're a group, grandfather, she says later on. Because she's frightfully posh. <laughs> um, they go, obviously go around. Gate crashing parties. And uh, getting out just before the police arrive, but we've got to get through a couple of songs first. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's Michael Kitchen. Uh, you probably know his face; he's been in lots of stuff. Uh, this is the Stone Ground continuing to play. Uh, there they are. It does go on quite quite a while. It's quite a big chunk of the film, to be honest. Uh, there we see uh, Snoggy. She's one of the posh people. Uh, that's Michael Kitchen, obviously one of the gate crashers, and he's uh, seducing her, but she's uh, allowing him to. Uh, she's all for it. Um, oh, and they've called the police, and the police are coming. The alarms of uh, the sirens have been heard, so they're all getting out of there. And uh, Christopher Neem's the last to go, and uh, as he's going, um, and I forgot to mute that then, didn't I? Uh, as he's going, he uh, grabs a uh, an ornament. The police are just about to come in. Look, they're knocking on the door, and he's going out the back door. He grabs an ornament. Look, he's going to break it. She thinks he's going to break it, and he pretends that he is. Look, he's teasing her. She's like, oh, yeah, you're going to break it. Oh, no. But then he does break it. <laughs> he, he knocks it on the floor. Cause he's a bad and he's a he's to show us that he's, he don't give he don't care less, and the police come in, and uh, no truncheons, <laughs> but uh, they find these two under the table, snogging, having a good time. And this this policeman here, this Bobby, British Bobby, finds them, and uh, the fella rolls out and says, "Peace, man," and the Bobby just smiles. So they must be well known. There we go. He has a smile. They've done no harm, really, have they? No harm. Done. Just a bit of a nuisance. So anyway, so they're going to meet in their their um, local. Um, it's like a coffee bar um, that they have. And there's this this chap here is always uh, dressed in like monk's robes. I've no idea why. He probably thinks he's a bit of a character. But he's there with Michael Kitchen. So they're going to meet in the coffee bar. Uh, there they are, it's Christopher Neem. They're all getting ready to go in. And we see them all about, and uh, the characters are, I forgot the names, he's Johnny, Johnny Alucard. Uh, I'm going to have to look up these names now, because I can't remember what they are, who they are. Um, de, 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 de. I think she's Marsha. Uh, I'm going uh, right, clockwise we'll go around. I think there's Marsha, uh, then Bob, that we can see. Uh, and then on the left is Michael Kitchen, who plays do, 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 Greg, and next to him is Laura. No, not no, not Laura. Gate, no gate. <laughs> Start again with Johnny Alucard. Then with Gate uh, Gainer, played by Marsha Hunt. Gainer. Then Bob. Then Greg. And I think her there with the blonde hair next to Greg is, I think she is Anna. 
Uh, and we'll see in a moment uh, some of the others uh, when we get a different camera angle. We will see, you know, oh, for God's sake, get on with it. Uh, by the way, um, you know, the bit bored, you know, they're fed up of gate crashing parties. And so Johnny Alicard says, why don't we do a, a ritual and, uh, you know, a, a what's he got, a bacchanal with Beelzebub. And there's Stephanie Beecham. She plays Lorimer Van Helsing's granddaughter, Jessica. And uh, I think that's a wig she's wearing there because she has different colour hair later on in the film. Uh, but she's uh, stunning. And there's a lovely Cal 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 Carolyn Munro. As uh, she pl she's playing Laura, uh, she comes to a sticky end in a bit. But wow, look at those eyes! Look at those eyes. She is beautiful. Can't help it. Can't help it. She just is. Anyway, he's saying here he wants to do a you know a satanic ritual uh, in a, a desanctified church, which is Saint Bartolf's, uh, which just happens to be where Lawrence Van Helsing's buried and Dracula's. Buried outside, or some of his ashes have been buried outside by his ancestor. Or is it his ancestor, or is he just really old? Has, has Dracula done something and made him, you know, old? But they do mention that his his line has served the Dracula, has served Dracula well. So anyway, it goes back to his pad. Seeing he's got uh, the ring uh, and the uh, the little vial of Dracula's uh, ashes. Uh, that's what he's, he's all ready for it now. He, he knows what he's doing. He's going to bring Dracula back to life. That's what we know is happening. There you go. He's got the painting. Well, that's, I think it's supposed to be a woodcut in it of uh, of Dracula there, um, and a crystal ball, just to add to the uh, mystical elements. Um, then, oh, then we're at a car wash. This is uh, Bob's car. Uh, him and uh, Jessica are in there. There they are. And uh, she's uh, there. You go. She's got uh, she's got blonde hair now. She had silver hair before. I think she I think she wears a wig sometimes. Um, she don't really want to go, but uh, you know, cause, um Johnny Alucard is always roping him into doing this wacky wacky stuff, and she's not uh, she's not over keen on it. But you know, Bob talks her into it. Says, "Well, if it's rubbish, we'll go." You know, and uh, he says, "All right then." So they have a quick snog in there, and then uh, they drive away with all the windows steamed up, and they don't seem to do anything about it. <laughs> anyway, so she goes home, and she goes rooting about in her grandfather's extensive library. It turns out Lorimer Van Helsing is a, a professor of um, like mythology and psychology, and but his, his expertise is in like um, satanic rituals and stuff like that. But obviously with his family connection, you know, Dracula. Uh, so she goes looking uh, in his library. She finds a book about satanic rituals. Um, let's see if I can find it. There you go. She's uh, pulled the book out. She has a look. Oh, whatever. It showed us close up before. Oh, there we go. Right. Are you going to gonna show us? Are you going to show us it close up? There we go. Treaties on the Black Mass. That's what she's got. There you go. Oh, didn't give us much much time to read that, did it? Uh, anyway. Van Helsing comes home, spitting image of his uh, gr uh, his grandfather. He says it's his grandfather, what uh, Lawrence Van Helsing. He comes home and uh, uh, he sees her reading this book and says, "You know that's not to be taken lightly, Jessica." He says, "Oh, grandfather, it's just it's just for giggles, for shits and giggles, man." Well, she doesn't say that, but that's what it boils down to, and. Um, he invites her, he says, why don't we go and have dinner together? And she says, well, I can't, I'm going out. And he says, oh, with that gang of yours. And she says, uh, we prefer to be called a group, grandfather. We're just a group of friends. And then she says to him that uh, she's not sleeping with anybody. Poor Bob. Uh, she's not dropping acid. Um, and uh, the 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 worst of a drug taking is a, a, a quick half a, half a What's it? Half a lag or half a bitter or whatever, half a pint of beer you know, every now and again, and that's that's as much as which sets him at ease. That uh, I'd be worried if I had a granddaughter that looked like Stephanie Beach. <laughs> but anyway, he's gone back to a silver hair again now. Um, it's confusing. I don't understand. She had blonde hair in the um, in the car wash, and now she's going. She must be taking that uh, that wig on and off. 
And there we go. He's gone. He's put the book back on the black mass, and then he finds another book. We're going to see it there. There you go. This book here. The Legend of Dracula the Vampire by Professor Lawrence Van Helsing. There you go. There you go. And uh, there was, let's see, he's getting a migraine now, thinking about Dracula's coming back. Uh, and he just happens to have um, an identical picture that Johnny Alicard's got. I think we're going to see it now. You know, the, there we go. He just happens to have that picture as well. It must be popular. <laughs> it must be popular among the... Uh, the community. Right, so Bob and uh, Jessica arrive at St Bartolph's Church. It's going to be knocked down, apparently. It's going to be demolished. It's been desanctified. So it's unhallowed ground, uh, but they've still all got all the gravestones in there. So they're just going to pull it all down with all the gravestones. Anyway, so they're getting through the fence, and then um, she actually finds her grandfather's... Um, grave um well bob finds it and points it out to her um well he tries to shield her from it but she sees it oh, hang on. and she's looking and she's thinking oh crack it's you know has, it, has johnny done this on purpose knowing that uh it's a a relative of jessica's and uh you know he, he, he says, i'm gonna punch him in the face or whatever he says does bob you know and she said, oh, it'll be all right. Uh, but then this idiot appears. There he is. He appears with a scary mask on, you know, goes, ah, to scare us, and then he pulls it off and, you know. If it were the filmed in, if it were like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or a Friday the 13th film or one of them sort of films, it'd have been the first to die. Because <laughs> he's annoying with his stupid bloody monk robes on. Because he thinks he's... Uh, Thinks he's a character. I mean, he's just a knobhead. Right, so they're going. Uh, and I think all the others are already there. Uh, and they've got, I think they've got a change of clothes for them, I think. Uh, I might be thinking of something else. Oh, he's, he's playing number with uh, Johnny Alicard about, um, about the gravestone. That's one of Jessica's ancestors. And uh, he says, whatever. That's right. Uh, so he starts playing the tape with some uh, spooky music on. Not muse, that sound effects, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and he gets on with his, uh, he's obviously got a smoke machine as well. <laughs> and um, they're all sat in a circle and all getting, you know, wow, man. I don't know if they're smoking out or what, I don't know, but they seem to get into it quite quickly. And he starts doing his, uh, he's got his black candles, and he starts doing his enchanting stuff. He's got an upside down crucifix there behind, as you can see. And he's calling on Beelzebub and all that, and Lucifer, and he goes through all these names, and he actually mentions and Count Dracula, because, you know, he got to mention him as well. And uh, I think a wind blows through the church then and gives them all a fright. Uh, but then he calls, obviously, they're all like, you know, getting, oh, look, uh, it's all getting into it, it's all good overacting stuff. <laughs> the tape's still playing. Um, see in there all, then they've got to start snogging and doing, you know, sexual things because it's a satanic rite as you can see and um but then he calls upon jessica van helsing because they've got to do a blood thing and uh he calls on her and she says no and uh, i'm not gonna do it uh so then laura steps up there she is carolyn munro she steps up and says no let it be me you promised it to be me johnny and all that uh, <laughs> So he's doing all that. Oh, right. by the way, while this is happening, while he's doing his incantations, uh, there you go. Obviously, uh, Dracula's uh, little uh, where they were buried is uh, starting to uh, to move a bit, and a bit of smoke starts coming out. I think, uh, and you know, it's that that uh, that's that part of that uh, cartwheel or whatever that uh, he put in a hundred years ago is still there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, come on, let's see a bit. Oh, it does in a minute. It starts smoking, and uh, there you go. This is uh, Carolyn Monroe saying, "No, let it be me. Let it be me. Don't want to be Jessica. Wants to be me because she wants to be the centre of attention." Does Laura? So I said, "All right, whatever." So uh, see all the winds blowing. 
they all decide to go because um, oh, he does. Um, he cuts his hand in a minute. Uh, they go in a minute when it, it all gets out of hand. See, she faints and he well, still like semi faints, and he carries her to the to the altar, and then he cuts his hand or cuts his wrist, I think, and pours his blood onto Dracula's ashes, and it all it all foams up as we'll see. As we'll see. Look at him. Good at him. There we go. He's about to do this now. He's putting the uh, there we go. He's putting the uh, the ashes in the uh, in the uh, the goblet. Uh, and there's the lovely Carol Munro uh, enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> and then he, he slits his wrists and lets the blood go in, and then the smoke starts coming out outside. There must be a bit of quantum entanglement going on with Dracula's ashes, you know. Do something to one lot of ashes, and the rest of them know what's uh, what's going on. And there you go, his, his blood's gone in, and it's all foaming and bubbling in the ash, and then it all starts pouring out all over, all over, oh, see, I've gone too far, look. all over Carolyn Munro. Sorry, Laura. There we go, it all pours out, look, she freaks out, and everybody else freaks out. But, uh, nice bit of hammer claret there. And uh, anyway, they all leg it. Uh, they all run away for some reason. I don't know why they all run away, because it's, you know... Only a bit of, bit of blood, isn't it? And I'd be thinking, oh, it's fake blood, but no, they think it's real, so they run off the lever. Uh, Jessica wants to help. She wants to, you know, we can't leave Laura there. But Bob just drags her away because Bob's an arsehole. Um, so they all go and leave uh, Laura behind. Um, so she's going to be Draclia's first victim. I know I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> so here it is. There we go. He's going to appear out of this mist in a minute. When he's ready, you know, Dracula appears precisely when he means to, which is a bit of a Lord of the Rings reference, isn't it? Because uh, Christopher Lee played Saruman, a wizard. And wizards arrive precisely when they mean to. So that's what Dracula's doing now, you know. <laughs> he's milking it, isn't he? He is, his mill. Come on, you bloody man. There you go. There he's appearing now. Uh, low angle shot, you know, to make him look menacing. <laughs> and tall. I mean, Christopher Lee's tall anyway. Maybe the cameraman's short. <laughs> so there he is. Dun, dun, dun. Or in Hammer, I think it'd be Dracula. That's what music is, isn't it? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if it does that or not. I don't think it does. Uh, so he uh, gets uh, there. He goes. He's going to get Carolyn Munro now, um, and he drinks Carolyn. Oh, see, I've gone too far. Look, I've gone too far. There we go. Is uh, go back a little bit further if it'll let me. Did he? Did did did. Anyway, there he is, there he is, biting Carolyn Monroe, drinking her blood there. He has returned from the grave, and Carolyn Monroe is no more. But she's happy, look, she's happy. There she is. <laughs> and he's going to have a bit more. He's going in for seconds. Arr, arr. Uh, and then, um, well, in a bit. Uh, and then Jessica's saying, we shouldn't have left... Um, we shouldn't have left uh, Laura behind. And he says, oh, they'll be fine. She'll be back at uh, at Johnny's pad. So anyway, so they said, you know, I'm sure they're fine. And then we see that she's not fine. Oh, in a bit. Have I gone, have I gone too far? Have I gone too far? I might have done. Or it might be a bit later on, actually. Might be a bit later on. We see, uh, you know, uh, Laura's fate. Yeah, it's a bit later on. It's a bit later on. Right, so back at the uh, the coffee bar. Uh, it's called the... Is it the cellar or the cavern? I think it's the cavern. Or it could be the cellar. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. Begins with C. Uh, and there he is. Um, um, I forgot the names already. Uh, that's Anna, isn't it? I think that's Gainer. Uh, and he is... Uh, oh, I forgot his name. The silly man in Monk. Bloody things. Um, uh, I don't know. Is it Joe? Could be Joe. I don't know. I don't know his name because I hate his character. He gets on my nerves. 
Uh, Bob and Jessica arrive. And they're asking, you know, has anybody seen Laura? And they don't know. They don't. So they're worrying about what's happened. Uh, but then Johnny comes in, and he says it was all a, it was all a gas. He says he's just put Laura. Oh, see, I've gone too far now. And it put Laura on on the train. I think he says that in a bit. Um, because they're asking, you know, where's Laura? And then we find out where Laura is. Uh, these kids find her body in the grounds of St. Bartolf's. Oh, see, I've gone too far. See, rooting about. Oh. See, it's going to show us in a bit, isn't it? It's going to show us in a bit. Anyway, he's saying he's put Laura on a train. She's gone to visit her folks in um, Brighton or wherever. Uh, but they don't really believe him. Um, but, uh, you know, they've, they've no choice but to believe him. That's what he's saying. They say, oh, folks don't live in Brighton. They live in Watford or somewhere. But anyway, it, 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 and he says the blood was, uh, you know, um, uh, pellets, blood capsules, blood capsules. He demonstrates one. And uh, he says, that's it. We're all, it was all a gas, man. It was all a gas. But, of course, we know that wasn't true. And there we go. And then we find uh, Laura's true face. She's dead in the graveyard, and them young lads have found her. So they'll be traumatised, won't they? So all these young young fellas finding dead women in, in these films. We had it in Life Force, didn't we? <laughs> anyway. So uh, Johnny tries to uh, weasel his way out of it by uh, giving um, Laura, uh, Jessica uh, free tickets to some show. I can't remember what. Uh, but she's not interested, so he's going to take Gaynor instead. Um, so him, uh, Gaynor and uh, Johnny head to uh, Johnny's pad in a bit. Um, uh, but then we cut to, uh, this is Inspector, what's his face? Uh, Inspector Murray, uh, played by Michael Coles, who's also in uh, Satanic Rites as the same character. Um, so Inspector Murray is investigating the, this death uh, of Laura, and um, apparently this is the coroner, and he says she'd been totally drained of blood, um, and uh, she's been, you know, severely um, uh, mutilated, you know, around, you know, the parts of her body and stuff. Uh, she didn't look it, did she, when we saw her? But apparently that's what he says. Uh, uh, Jessica's still not convinced. She says, "I'm sure Laura's parents live in Watford." Um, this is the uh, the police going through the uh, the evidence, and it, it, it recalls because they're thinking it's some sort of you know some sort of rite that's gone on. Uh, she's some sort of blood sacrifice. That's what the the decide. So he decides he's going to call on Lorimer Van Helsing because he's worked with him before in uh, a previous case. So he's going to do that. Um, that's what they're talking about there. Uh, right, so Gaynor, I think it's Gaynor, isn't it? Uh, Gaynor. Yes, it is Gaynor, yes, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Gaynor is in Johnny's pad. It's a very nice pad, but it costs a fair bit. In swinging London. Um, but uh, she's uh, you know, he's, uh, plying her with drink and stuff like that, but he's going to... He's gonna he's gonna take her back to the church to to give to Dracula in a bit, but she's having a, a joint. Uh, meanwhile, they've gone to see Van Elsin and um, they they tell him the details that um, you know the victim Laura were drained of blood and he wants to he wants to speak also to uh, Jessica because you know obviously they've got a list of known associates because. Well, apparently Laura had previously been arrested. Remember the go gate crashing party? She must have been arrested at some point. For and she'd been arrested for like minor um drug, you know, things. Uh so they've got a list of associates and Jessica's one of those associates. So they want to speak to Jessica as well. Um but um it piques his interest, uh Lorimer Van Elsen's interest when they talk about this being drained of blood. So he starts talking about vampirism, you know, in that Peter Cushing way where he's, he's rolling his eyes all over the place. <laughs> but anyway, Johnny's uh, still uh, seducing, so to speak, Gaynor. There you go. Um, 
and Van Helsing's banging on about Dracula and stuff like that, and vampires, and not to be not to be trifled with. And you know, do you think I'm a, a nutcase? And he mentions his uh, his grandfather, uh, Lawrence, had actually fought a vampire. Because apparently this story is loosely based on the story of the the Highgate Vampire, which were a, a popular uh, story in the in the seventies, um, a supposedly true story about some some reporter that found that there were a vampire living in Highgate Cemetery. You can Google it; it's on it's on it's on the internet. Uh, but Van Helsing, you know, says, you, "You think I'm a crackpot?" And as he says, "No, I've been a policeman too long to uh, to rule anything out." Uh, so you know he's, he's open to uh, anything really um, and they arrive home they see the police police are at the house at uh, Jessica's house so she goes in and uh, she tries to uh, you know protect her friends but then they say you know Laura's dead and uh, so she she gets all upset well, she's got blonde hair now by the way <laughs> so she gets all upset obviously and she said it it's Johnny. Well, you know, he said it was just a, a gag, but uh, obviously not. Uh, there was Johnny still seducing my um, gainer, so she's all upset about that. So they're gonna, you know, don't leave town and all that. So they're gonna go and see if they can find this Johnny Alacard chap. And he's saying, I don't know, we're this close or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so she's upset, is uh, Jessica, so she's uh, giving her grandfather a hug. Uh, all right, so Johnny's now taking uh, Gainer back to St Bartolf's. Uh, she's probably a bit kale-eyed. Uh, so if, if 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 Dracula drinks her blood while she's drunk, will he become drunk, like in uh, What We Do in the Shadows? <laughs> uh, oh, wow, this was Van Helsing realising there he's got to he's got to write it down look Alucard has got to he's got to write it down to work out that it's Dracula backwards <laughs> you can just see it can't you you don't need to do a bloody diagram do you <laughs> they did a similar thing in um, uh, Monster Squad didn't they you know they must think the audience are idiots and maybe they are but there you go look at them fag butts there look sorry cigarette butts can't say that can I cigarette butts because uh, I think Peter Cushing was a bit of a chain smoker. I'm surprised he lived as long as he did, to be honest. Anyway, there he is. He's realised Dracula's back. Uh, there he's. Uh, uh, Johnny's giving uh, Gainer over to the the Dark Lord. There he is, and he's he's angry because he wants Jessica because she's you know blood relative of Van Helsing and. He wants to punish the Van Helsing lines. She's not the one. And um, he says, well, she'll do, but uh, make me a vampire and I'll be able to help you more. So so he does. So um, he kills Gainer and he also turns uh, Johnny Alucard into a vampire and, and Jessica wakes up screaming and... Uh, there you go. He comes running in. Does this. obviously don't lock a door. He comes running in. Does uh, grandfather and cops a bit of a feel here because <laughs> she's very well endowed. Is Stephanie Beecham? There we go. Look. My gum. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. She's always had a nightmare. There we go. Disposing of Gainer's body. Did dispose of uh, Laura's very well, did he? But never mind. This is him. He's pleading for him to. Pleading for Dracula to make him into a vampire, which he does. Right, don't know who that is. I can't see it from my head. No man. There's a photo of a woman. Must be his wife. Uh, Jessica's grandmother, probably. Uh, and here we go. He's, I think he's getting um, something silver. I think out of there. Uh, what is it? A silver crucifix. I do believe. Getting that out. I thought he was going to make a silver bullet, but he don't. Uh, he just. Uh, he uses it. The next film, in the Satanic Rites, he makes a, a silver bullet. Uh, what's happening here? Oh, he's putting the crucifix on uh, onto Jessica. And uh, thank goodness he does, because uh, she needs it. 
And that's had an atmospheric shot, isn't it? Dracula in an old church with you know moonlight beaming through the windows. Cool. Uh, in some sort of laundry. She looks... Uh, <laughs> I think she's supposed to be a bit of a down and out, isn't she? A fag in a gob. I keep saying that word, sorry. Cigarette in a gob. That's what they were called. That's what they call them in this country. It's not, it's not, it doesn't mean the other thing. But uh, look at her. I bet she's, she's actually, I bet she's really pretty when she uh, sorts herself out. Uh, so what's happening here now? Uh, I can't actually remember. Is that Johnny Alucard? I think it is, isn't it? Is he, he's, he's looking for a, oh, he's looking for a victim, isn't he? That's what he's doing because he's been turned into a vampire. Are we going to see his teeth? It doesn't say how we turned him into a vampire. Usually in the law, you have to drink the vampire's blood and then... No, they drink your blood and then you have to drink the vampire's blood, don't you? And then you become a vampire after you die. And then you you get ill and you die and then you rise from the grave. But in this one, it's just turned him. Must be like being a zombie or something, I don't know. Anyway, so there you go. He's gonna. He's looking for his ne- his first victim. He's going he's gonna to show us his, his fangs. Here we go. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a vampire. So she's going to be his first victim. Uh, oh, this is uh, Lorimer Van Elsen. He's gone into church and he's uh, basically stealing some holy water from the font um, because he's going on a holy crusade. He's going to speak to uh, Inspector Murray uh, about, um, about what's going on and what he thinks should be done. Uh, he says Drac. He says he thinks it's Dracula. I think it's this pie says he thinks it's Dracula. You know, he's somehow he's risen from the grave, and he don't really, he don't really believe him, does Inspector Murray? But you know, he don't totally poo-poo himself. He says if my bosses thought I was taking what you're saying seriously, that that you know, have me committed and stuff. But but he's not, uh, he's not dismissing everything. And uh, look at that old trim phone. I used to read when I was a kid. I really wanted us to get one of them, but we never did. We just got a regular telephone when I was a kid. But I wanted a trim phone that was the old. I can't do it now. I used to be able to do that. <laughs> the trim phone noise. Uh, anyway, so he's, he's saying that uh, Dracula's got to return to his grave in St Bartolph's every night, and um, um. And then he's, he's about this. Uh, talks about Johnny Alucard, and he wants to know where he lives. And um, but uh, I don't think anybody knows where he lives. He must uh, keeps a low profile, and nobody knows where he where he stays. Uh, but he finds. Um, I think they find Gainer's body by this time, and also, oh, pardon me, Johnny Alucard's first victim. Although they don't know that Johnny Alucard's a vampire yet. Uh, But um, he goes to see. Um, I think oh, they've, they've, they've closed the the cavern. Is it a cavern or cellar? I can't remember. Let's have a look. What does it say? Uh, plot. What does it say in the plot? It doesn't say in the plot on on um, on um, Wikipedia. I'm trying to see. No, it doesn't uh, doesn't say the name of the the coffee bar. I think I think it's the cavern. I think it's the cavern. Anyway, so he goes there, uh, but apparently it's closed. The police have closed it down on some on some drugs charge. Um, uh, what's happening here? I can't remember. Uh, oh, that's Bob. He's going to check out the cavern. That's it. But he gets got by Johnny Alucard, as we'll see in a bit. So he becomes a vampire as well. Uh, Van Elsen's checking out the church. Um, while he's out, Bob's gone to his house and he's asking for Jessica. Je- Jessica's not supposed to be going out. The police have told her to stay in. But she goes out. Um, Bob says, you know, you've got to come with us at, me, at the, the, the cavern. Um, something to do with Laura or whatever. And uh, so she goes... Um, so they head out. Uh, she doesn't know, by the way, that uh, Bob is now a vampire. The pesky thing. Uh, meanwhile, Van Helsing's still trying to find a way into St Bartolph's, uh, but he gets in through the fence. 
Uh, anyway, they get to the cavern, and uh, I think he Bob's there. Um, Johnny, Johnny's there, uh, but they get out of it, and they're trying to, you know, um, they're scaring her to death because they're being all vampy, they're showing the teeth, and Bob tries to bite her uh, in a minute. It does a, a hilarious. Um, I'm going to show it here in a minute. Right, see, the, the Johnny touches the crucifix, look. Pulls it off and it burns his hand. Ah, look like that. That's great acting. Tss, like that. Ah, it burns. And uh, so she picks it up. Then I think Bob grabs her and he's going to bite her. And uh, Johnny says, no, she's for the master. But a uh, nice bit of cleavage there. You know, that's what we want. It's Hammer Films, isn't it? Ooh, heck. <laughs> but uh, here we go. He stops him, does, uh, does Johnny, and he pulls a great face. Are you ready for this? Hey, I'm a vampire. It's cool. I think I drew a picture of that once. <laughs> there we go. So he stops him. And uh, so they're going to take her to... Uh, to St. Bartles, that's what they're going to do. Uh, obviously, uh, Van Helsing found nothing at St. Bar Bar Bartles. So he's, he's phoned home and, uh, to speak to Jessica, but she's not there, the housekeeper. Says uh, she went with one of her young friends and she couldn't do anything to stop him. And um, I think he says, mentioned something about a cavern, so he knows he's to go there. But uh, he can't get in because it's all closed, so he's running about and um, he meets Anna. She's there in a moment. Oh, well, I did do. Hey. He meets Anna. She's trying to get in there and uh, he can't. It's all closed. There's a bobby there on guard. Um, he meets Anna in a bit. Is that her coming out of that car now? No, it isn't. That's somebody else. He sees her in a bit anyway. He can't find a way in. Oh. No, he does go in. Um, he gets in, but uh, obviously there's no sign of anybody. But I think he sees the uh, the necklace, the crucifix, picks it up. So he knows that Jessica's been there. Uh, so then he, he encounters Anna. He's been running through the streets of London. Um, because it's AD 1972. There we go, sets off the Soldo Theatre Cinema. We used to have one of them in our town. Uh, a bit before my time, in my time it was called Classic. It was a classic cinema. And then it became the Apollo. Anyway. I digress. Right, so he's running about, he's catching his breath, and then Anna gets out of this car here. And she calls Professor Van Helsing. And she knows where Johnny Alacard lives. Because she went there once. So she tells him his address. So Van Helsing heads over to Johnny Alacard's pad. There we go, Johnny's packing up, he's getting ready to leave. He's obviously, he's got his coffin ready. <laughs> well, obviously, he's using it as, he, as his coffin. But uh, Van Helsing arrives, says, Who the hell are you? And then, uh, there we go. A fracas ensues, uh, fangs are bared. <laughs> but uh, they have a, a bit of a fight. See, so Arnie stabs. Um, um, Van Helsing in, I think in the arm or somewhere like that and um, but um, Van Helsing uses the power, uses a mirror to reflect the sunlight onto onto Johnny and drives him into the bathroom and he's going ah, and then he pulls a blind up in the bathroom and he's going ah because oh and by the way we'd also establish that uh, clear running water kills vampires and he falls in the bath, turns on the shower so the combination of sunlight and clear running water finishes off Johnny Alacard. Get them platforms on there. Get them heels. <laughs> on his cool boots. So that's the end of Johnny Alacard. There he is, look. It burns. Eh? All his skin's all going manky. So that's all. There we go, so that's the end of him. But... Uh, Old uh, Van Helsing's injured. Oh, where's Jessica? He's yelling there. Where's Jessica? And he's, the master will do stuff. <laughs> uh, but he knows where she is. He knows she's, she's at St. Bartolf's. He knows this. Because he, he says it. You know, next this next scene, he says he's gone to St. Bartolf's, even though 
you know, why he didn't have to ask where Jessica was. But uh, anyway, he gets his arm patched up and he heads over there. After he gets his arm patched up. Uh, oh, there they find uh, Johnny Alucard dead in the bath. Uh, there you go, he's heading over to the the churchyard. There you go, and he finds Jessica on the uh, the altar. Um, he puts the necklace around her neck again and uh, cops a, another feel. <laughs> I mean, it can't be out there, are they? I'm not saying he should because they're there. I'm just saying, you know, they're, they're quite prominent. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't really avoid them, can you? Anyway, so he does that. Uh, puts the, the uh, crucifix around the neck. Uh, but then... Uh, um, it's daytime, by the way. It suddenly turns to night uh, for some reason. Um, there you go. Oh, by the way, he'd put... He'd um, like... I think that's that's why it suddenly turns to night. It doesn't suddenly turn to night. He's, so he's digging a trap. Uh, he digs a big hole and puts all spikes in it. So obviously he thinks he's, uh, thinks he's uh, the A-team or MacGyver or something like that. There you go. Using all his... Uh, all that lot. And he builds a, a pit with spikes, with wooden stakes in. So by the time he's done all that, night has fallen. So it goes back inside, and Jessica's still there. Then Dracula arrives, looking a bit unkempt, didn't he? <laughs> Did he run? He must have done. Uh, anyway, there she is, isn't she? gorgeous. Uh, she sits up, and uh, then you push your chest out, love, because that's you can just hear the director saying that. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, ah, the uh, crucifix reflects onto Dracula, and you're like, ah, ah. Ah, put it away and he take the because push your chest out, love. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, uh, so he's not even looking, look, he trusts himself. Um there you go. Anyway, he grabs out of it and uh, burns his hand obviously, but uh, gets it off Jessica. And uh, <laughs> then Van Elsen appears, does his old uh, Peter Vincent stuff. Uh, and they they fight, you know, back spawn of Satan and all that. Uh, and those, those eyes have gone red looking, too scary. Uh, but they have a fight and uh, they end up outside somehow. Um, oh, he's, uh, something's happened to him there, I can't remember what. But, uh, he's being staked. Oh, Van Elsie must have staked him, but he falls down. But he's not dead yet, he's not dead. She goes and pulls the stake out, does uh, Jessica, because she's under his uh, control. Uh, but I don't know if it doesn't look like a wooden stake, does it? It looks metal, so maybe it's not killing him like a wooden stake would. But um, she goes and pulls it out anyway. He's like, no, Jessica, don't. But she, you know, she can't help herself. She's under his power. And uh, he throws some holy water at him. They go outside. The chase continues outside into the to the graveyard. He throws some holy water at Dracula and burns his hands and stuff in his face. And then he uh, stumbles backwards. There we go. Into the pit of spikes, of stakes. So there you go. So she comes out of her, um, her trance. Goes, oh, my goodness. And uh, well, Van Helsing uh, picks up the shovel, uh, has a look round, looks like, hey, Crack, what what are you doing with me now? What you, I'm... Oh, what what were this doing here? This one here earlier. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Look, someone else says, "Shut your gob!" and picks up a spade and pushes him down onto the spikes even more. There you go. Here we go. Well, it's not a spade; it's a shovel, isn't it? There's a difference. Picks up the shovel. Here we go, and just pushes him down. More uh, hammer claret. Are you ready? There we go. Yeah. Bit of hammer claret showing there, and then uh, that's the end of Dracula in this film. <laughs> in a bit, uh, Jessica does a bit more overacting. There we go. Nice bit of. Uh, it doesn't look like real blood, does it? So you can show it. <laughs> it's too red, isn't it? Uh, so that's that. And then he uh, disintegrates uh, as they do. Uh, he is disintegrating into nothing, and um, he goes and collects Jessica, and 
if you look at the uh, the grave of um, of um, Lawrence Van Elsen, it said that that Latin thing, and he, you know, then the show was it in English, rest in final peace, and that's the end of the film. There you go. And then we get the uh, the credits. Count Dracula, Christopher Lee, Professor Van Helsing. They spelled Professor wrong, haven't they? I've just noticed that. They put two Fs in Professor. There's only one F in Professor. Hey, dear. But uh, there you go. There you go. So that's the end of that one. It's a good film. I like that. A lot of people don't like these two films, by the way. They're generally scorned among the uh, Hammer devotees. But they're my two favourites. Yeah, I do. I really like them. But uh, that's it for that one. And then what happens next is, I think, uh, Satanic Rites of Dracula came out a year later, or the next year. But I think it's supposed to be set, I don't know if it's three or three or five years later. I can't remember. Uh, does it say? Does it say? Uh, two years later. <laughs> two years later. I thought it was three. Or five. But it's two years later. It's set in 1974 is the Satanic Rites of Dracula. So we'll get that one up. And we'll just carry on. Because it's like one long film, to be honest. It is, sort of. So, we'll get Satanic Rites up. Are you ready? Ooh, there we go. That starts. And this has got a cool theme. But I can't play it because, um, as I said before, um, I had to re-edit. The reason why I couldn't do it this last week is because I had to re-edit this film because I forgot there's quite a bit of nudity in this one. No nudity at all in the previous one, in Dracula AD 1972. Uh, just lots of cleavage. But there's quite a bit of nudity in this one. Um, and not as much cleavage, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, never mind. But anyway, we start off with a funky a funky theme, uh, which I can't play. Um uh, if I could, I would, uh, but I can't. Uh, and, and anyway, it's called Satanic Rites of Dracula. I think in uh, America this was called something like Dracula's Bride or something like that. Uh, uh, does it say release? I'm looking release. Doesn't it say. Da, 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 da. Uh, uh, Dr Count Dracula and his Vampire Bride. That's what it was called in. Uh, in America, and it wasn't released in America until 1979, which is interesting, isn't it? But anyway, so, I've oh, pressed wrong one. Hey, close that one. Hey, I nearly started looking at Dracula AD 1972 again then. Anyway, so we have the credits, there we go. Satanic Rites of Dracula, 1973, Hammer Film Productions. Um, so that comes on. Uh, we're going through the credits, and it's got a funky theme. Uh, see, showing London... Uh, oh, we have this uh, like a, a graphic of Dracula that that's growing from the corner. Um, I've had to, there's a bit of a blur there in the corner. I don't know if you can see it, but I had to blur out a, a logo um, because you know, as I said, I had to re-edit, but I had to I had to use some free software <laughs> to convert it. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, and it had a logo in. I thought, I'm not paying, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> so I've blurred out the logo. Because I'm a tight ass. Anyway, so... Right, Roy Skeggs, produced by Roy Skeggs, who, as I said before, uh, would go on to produce the brilliant uh, Hammer House of Horror TV series. Right, we start off. We're in an old house. It's called Pelham House. And this is where we start with the, uh, the nudity. Uh, there's a satanic rite going on. Oh, what then? Um, uh, obviously, something's going on. We see there's a there's going to be a a, a, a a sacrificial woman on the on the altar. As we see, there's, there's Freddie Jones there and other older men. These apparently they're all like high-ranking uh, scientists and ministers and uh, military men. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like a reference to the Hellfire Club of the. Uh, the 18th and 19th centuries. But uh, here we go. There's, I don't know who she is. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look who she is. I can't remember her name. Uh, da, 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 da. She's called... Oh, God. <laughs> I apologise in advance. She's called Chin Yang. <laughs> Played by Barbara Yuling. 
Uh, but she's in charge of Pelham House, apparently. Uh, and she's also in charge of this satanic rite. She's doing the old... Uh, the old goblet. Get the goblet out, don't they? But uh, anyway, so... There you go. First bit of nudity they had to cover up. A young woman showing her boobs. Um... Uh, then it cuts away, and we see these uh, these are the uh, henchmen of Pelham House wearing their um, I don't know what they call them some sort of sheepskin uh, uh, waistcoats because <laughs> it's the seventies, uh, and they've got a chap um, there. It's an agent uh, for the uh, like a like not the police, but like um, you know, like the FBI or whatever, or the uh, CID or one of these you know agencies, law enforcement agencies. Uh, is, is an agent for them. They've got him. He's obviously they've been beating him up, um, but he, he gets out. There he is. Uh, but he manages to escape. Uh, he overpowers his captors. There we go. And uh, he escapes. He gets out. And uh, while all the while this is going on, the, the ceremony is still going on in the uh, so elsewhere in the house. It's not in the basement because uh, we see the basement later on and that's got other things down there. Uh, but anyway, he runs out outside and we, there's a car parked outside and we see there's a, a fellow with a gun. And this this uh, henchman on a motorbike um, rides, you know, comes riding up and uh, gets shot for his trouble in a minute. Oh, it'll be in a minute. Dee 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 dee. Thought I'd do it theme. So he's gonna he's gonna ride ride out to his death in a moment. So he's uh, he's trying to escape. Let's see how oh, it goes too far. So anyway, this car this car's there in a minute. Go on, get on with it. Oh, there must be somebody else that got shot. Hang on, see how those two. Oh. Right, let's see what happens. Right, he gets to the gate, look. Uh, there's a flashing light, I don't know why. Maybe because the gate's open. Don't know why the gate's open. So it's coming out. Uh, there's a crash bike there already. And I can't remember what happened there. <laughs> he must have brought somebody down because there's a, a body there, isn't there? But then I think this fella gets shot, I do believe. There we go. He's about to get shot. There we go. Being shot through his face. Crikey. And uh, so he makes it to the car. It's obviously his uh, people he works with. And they take him back to their HQ, which are all modern. And uh, like I said, this it, it reminds me, when, when it gets to the, the HQ, there we go, we're in the HQ now with, um, um, oh, what's his face? Um, <sighs> I can't remember his name. Um William Franklin, that's his name. With William Franklin, he's in charge, and uh, it reminds me like an episode of like the New Avengers or or, or the Professionals or some, or some show like that from the seventies. Uh, one of those, um, I forgot the name of the bloke that wrote it, uh, Brian Clemens sort of uh, show that we used to get on on TV in the sixties and seventies. Uh, Reminds me of that. But uh, anyway, they're there at the HQ and the the talking to him is, is obviously is in a bad way. But he's trying to tell him as much as he can, and he's got a microfilm. He's been taking photos as well, so he's got a microfilm that he's given given them. I think it were in his. I think it were in his watch. Um, so there we go. He's telling them about the uh, the rituals that's going on um, with the uh, the top ranking uh, politicians and military people and scientists, and uh, oh, that's where they're getting the uh, the microfilm. Uh, this is the secretary of the, uh, and she she comes a cropper in a bit. Um, oh, there's um, oh, I can't remember his name either. Uh, Richard Vernon. There we go. You might know him from um, shows like uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> I think he played Slarty Bart fast in, uh, in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, but the the they're getting the uh, the microfilm developed, so they're gonna. Be looking at uh, some important people entering Pelham House soon. Um, 
There you go, that's what they're getting. And apparently the, he's been telling him, and he dies as the, the agent. Um, but he's got it all on tape. Uh, he's told, you know, what he knows. It's all on tape, so they're going to get it uh, transcribed. And uh, this chap here tell, tells him that, uh, you know, he's dead. He's, he's not going to suffer any longer because he's dead. So they tell her to, you know, get that transcribed and, and you know, we'll see you tomorrow. And um, But she gets waylaid, as we will see. As we will see. But they've got still got the uh, photos to um, to uh, to look at in a moment. Uh, here we go. I think this is the next day. I think we had a passage of time then when we saw the uh, <laughs> uh, the fountain. Uh, so they've got some slides ready to show. This is from the the film. So showing Pelham House, and we're seeing uh, we're seeing people go into Pelham House. We see Freddie Jones and stuff like that. And then I think we're listening to the tapes as well um telling us what's going on um you know the the blood sacrifice and all that they basically they kill this woman that's uh, to be sacrificed they stab her with a dagger there you go uh and then they put the the blood of dracula or whatever it is on and um and uh you know uh, the wound heals up so there you go um so that's what's going on here, but they're still looking at these photos and still listening to the tape about what's going on. Uh, they're looking at the other important people, and one of them is, you know, the man with direct responsibility for their department. So, you know, the stroke of his pen and all our pensioners could go up in smoke. So that's the kind of people they're dealing with. So uh, more of this. They do bang on about this quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, the secretary decides to go home, so she's heading out in her mini, a proper mini. Have you seen minis these days? They're massive. But this is a proper mini from the 1970s. <laughs> Good old British Leyland mini. Not one of these German monstrosities we've got today. that are huge. You can call them minis. Anyway, she's going to get chased by one of the henchmen in um, with his uh, Afghan... Waistcoat on, or whatever they call them. There you go, the chasing her, and the follower down her, the force her down a dead end, and uh, they basically the the kidnapper take her to Pelham House. So anyway, they're still going on, still listening to this tape. He's telling them about um, the 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 rituals that are going on, you know, satanic rituals, and all that. They they've killed this young woman, but then she comes back to life, and. Uh, there you go, we're going to see it heal up now, look. The blood disappears. Why does the blood disappear? I don't know, but it heals up, look. And she sits up and everything's unky dory There you go, she sits up and everything's fine. Uh, oh, I've been to show... Um, remember, uh, Inspector Murray knows uh, Lorimer Van Helsing. So he says, you know, he should let him look at this because he's into all this stuff. He knows all about satanic rituals and stuff and he's worked with him before and he's a good man. So that's what they do. And uh, he suspects it's something to do with vampirism, the cult of vampirism. And he says, I myself, you know, defeated a cult two years ago at St. Bartle's Church and all that. And uh, and then Jessica comes in. By the way, it's got smoke, all smokers. It is chain smoking in this. He just put a cig out, then he lights one up straight away. Don't know how he lived as long as he did, but uh, anyway. Uh, so they're talking away, and then Jessica comes in, and we see she's had a head transplant in a minute. <laughs> she's no longer Stephanie Beecham. Uh, here she comes, look, I think. I do believe. Here she is. There we go. This is the new Jessica Van Helsing, played by the lovely Joanna Lumley. And she's lovely, but, you know, she's no Stephanie Beach, I mean, she... <laughs> I mean, let's face it, she ain't, is she? But, uh, but there you go. You can't have everything. I don't know why. Maybe she, maybe Stephanie Beach wasn't available, but I don't know. But they've recast her. Um, but anyway, she does a good job. Right. So... Um, so he says, you know, it's, it's it's a cult of vampires and all that. And then um, oh, the, one of the photos is Freddie Jones, and he plays a professor, um, 
uh, Freddie Jones plays Dr. Julian Keeley. That's who he plays. Um, and Jessica says, oh, you you know Julian Keeley very well, grandfather. And um, he says, I was going to tell you, but I'm going to speak to him first. And then Murray says, maybe that's for the best, you know, rather than the police going in all ham-fisted, questioning him. It's best, you know, if a friend goes and talks to him. So that's what they decide to do. So Van Elsin heads over to the Keeley Foundation. Uh, it's probably on um, um, that street where all doctors are. Harley Street, probably. I don't know. But uh, he heads there and... Um, uh, can't got my phone binging. He can't get in at the front, so he goes round the back, finds the doors unlocked, so he goes in. And uh, now we go to see uh, Freddie Jones, Dr. Julian Keeley, hard at work in his lab, and um, he seems shocked at um, Van Elsen's uh, arrival. Uh, he says, it's ready, it's ready, and he's all all worried, because it's Freddie Jones, and that's that's what he plays most of the time, don't he? People that are having like palpitations and stuff, he's good at that. He's good at that, it's Freddie Jones. The late, great Freddie Jones. Um, you may have seen him in stuff like Firefox and Krull, and, you know, loads of stuff he's big in him. Um, and also in um, Young Sherlock Holmes, Bloody Rami Tep. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, anyway, so uh, Van Elsen saying, yeah, you have the splendid equipment you have here. And um, yeah, so it's something I've been working on. And uh, it turns out he's got a timeline. He's got to have some, uh, uh, like a virus ready by a certain date. And it turns out that this date is uh, like, you know, a satanic ritual date. I can't remember which one. Um, so he's, he's questioning him, you know, lightly about it and... Um, but then he starts talking about, you know, his satanic rituals and, you know, the the joy of blasphemy and all that. And and Van Nelson says, Julian, in God's name. Uh, but then a gun appears at the uh, at the uh, at the, uh, the 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 door and shoots. Oh, it's going to be in a minute, isn't it? We're not going to see it here. Oh, are we? And and shoots Van Elsen in a minute. And he goes looking at the uh, the viruses. No, it's going to be in a minute. It's going to be in a minute. Here we go. We see uh, the secretary. What's her name, anyway? The secretary. Uh, da, 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 da. Does it say... Does it say... Uh, where are we? Where are we? There, Jane. She's called Jane, played by Valerie Van Ost. Um, so this is Jane, the secretary. She's at Pelham, Pelham House now. Um... She's been held. This is going to get a visit from a certain um, a certain count. So obviously he's been brought back, but we don't. I don't know how. It doesn't explain. Obviously one of his followers resurrected him somehow in some way, similar to what we saw in the previous film. He must have dug him up from St Bartolf's. But as we learn, uh, St Bartolf's were pulled down. Remember, and within two years they built a bloody office block on it. They did that quick. Anyway, so he arrives in a, a cloud of smoke as he does, and uh, so he's going to uh, going to feast on Jane. But he don't just he don't just kill her; he turns her into a vampire as well. So as we will see later. But there you go. He's using her, his vision. Look, she's enraptured by him because uh, that's how he hypnotizes women, doesn't he? Just like I do. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, anyway, so this is Freddy, he's banging on here about uh, wonders of um, satanic rituals and stuff. Uh, and this is where the uh, he gets shot in a minute. This is where he's going on about the dates and stuff. You know, he's got to be ready for a certain date. Um, there we go. And then the, the, the baddie sneaks in. The henchman comes in. Obviously... Uh, Julian sees him, oh, oh, but he doesn't say, look out, um, Van Elsen. And there we go, and the gun comes up. A lot of shooting in this film, isn't there? Boom, there we go, shot in the head. Um, but luckily he's a crap shot. <laughs> he, just, he just grazed him. But you'd think he'd still be in shock, wouldn't you? Even the graze would freak you out. Anyway, they think Van Elsen is dead, uh, but then they kill um, uh, Julian Keeley. Uh, they hang him. They would think Van Elsen is dead, but he's not. 
He's not. He's right. Uh, gets found by. Um, I think he, he comes to. I think and he phones up Murray and Murray comes round, and they find. Um, oh, he finds Julian hanging. So has he hanged himself? Has he been hanged? I think he's been hanged. Um, so. Uh, Professor, uh, Professor Murray, uh, Inspector Murray, and for some reason Jessica decided to come along with them. They're checking out Pelham House, and they're gonna, uh, and William Franklin as well, and they're gonna go in through the basement, I think, and they tell her to stay in the car. But obviously she doesn't. <laughs> obviously not. Uh, but they go to the front thing. Beep! It's the police. Let us in. So they let them in, and. Um, the, the talk about, you know, the disturbance that happened the other night, you know, when there were some hooligans on motorbikes and stuff. They said some of the neighbours complained about it and and uh, Ying Yang, or whatever the bloody hell is it called, Chin Yang, sorry. Uh, Chin Yang says, oh, it was just hooligans, hooligans on motorcycles. We didn't think it was worth, you know, uh, reporting. Anyway, so Jessica, you know, being a woman... Doesn't do as she's told and sneaks into the basement through a, another door and uh, finds out what's down there, what's in the basement. And she finds that, um, as we'll see, there's Jane there and she thinks Jane's asleep or something, but Jane opens her eyes and we find out that she's a vampire and there's other vampires down there as well, like Dracula's brides. Um, but anyway, so she sees, she sees Jane and says, Are you all right, love? She doesn't say that, but <laughs> that's what she's thinking. Uh, the lovely Joanna Lumley. No Stephanie Beecher, but she's still lovely in her own right. She's a national treasure. That's what she is, Joanna Lumley. You may know her from, you know, the new Avengers and uh, absolutely fabulous, amongst other things. Anyway, I think she was in a James Bond film, wasn't she? Was she in um, um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service? I think she was in that, wasn't she? As one of Blofeld's girls... I do believe. Anyway, so she's going to check on Jane. And uh, Jane tries to bite her look. Ah, but obviously she's chained up, so she backs off. But uh, we can see, look, she's a vampire. Uh, but then there's other vampires down there. We see some uh, some crates opening up, look. There you go. I can't see it from my head. <laughs> there you go. See now, look. Some crates opening up, so there's a lot of Dracula's brides in there, look. And oh that's the young woman we saw on the uh, on the altar, isn't it? She's there. So they're all trying to get Jessica now. Look, ah look, ah, it's all kicking off. Uh with you know blurry, shaky vision. Uh but Murray and um William Franklin. What's his name of his character? Um Torrance. Peter Torrance. Uh, so Murray and Torrance come down. That's a, be a good name for a cop show, that wouldn't it? Murray and Torrance, <laughs> CID. They come down, and uh, but Murray knows all about this stuff now. Remember, because he's a friend of Van Helsing, and he knows that he's got to get um, uh, a wooden stake. So the fend off the 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 two of the vampires, and uh, oh, I see I've missed a bit now. Look. And he, uh, he stakes, um, no, not yet. He's done, see, I've missed it, look. And he, he gets a bit of wood. There we go. Gets a bit of wood there from one of the crates and uh, puts uh, Jane out of her misery because she's trying to get uh, Torrance look. And uh, anyway, there we go. Goes straight in there, bang. That was close, wasn't it? I nearly missed. I nearly showed it then, didn't I? <laughs> bit of boob. But uh, there we go. Well, they're all, ah, ah. She's hard as well, but, you know, she's going to a better place. Hey. So that's that going on. So anyway, so they've, they've dispatched Jane, but not the others. They leave others to their um, thingy. I think they get them later with the, the sprinklers. Oh, is it here? They might do it here. They might do it later. Uh, I think it's a bit later with the sprinklers come on later. That that uh, that sees them off, sees off Dracula's brides. Anyway, they're escaping, and they get away scot free, so to speak. Um, so where where are they? They're at Van Helsing's pad. Yeah, they're at Van Helsing's house here now. 
Uh, see, he's all right. Look, he's got a bandage on. He's fine. <laughs> just be shot at head. He's fine. It just grazed him. Anyway. So they're all, you know, thinking, well, what are we going to do? And and Van Helsing's telling them about this virus that um, Keel is... Um, created that could wipe out all life on earth and they said well why would you want to do that he said well it's dracula in it and and they said well why would he want to do that you know if, if there's nobody left uh, you know what would he feed on he says well he don't he wants to die now and but he wants to take the whole world with him that's uh that's his plan he's 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 been on the earth for 500 years or whatever and now he, he wants to die uh, but uh, in his last act of defiance or whatever, uh, vengeance, he wants to take the whole world with him, not just the um, not just the Van Helsing family. He wants to take everybody. Anyway, so this is when Van Helsing makes a silver bullet. I think he melts down a crucifix and uh, or something, and makes a silver bullet. I think just one. Puts it in his little gun. He's got a little gun, and. Uh, um, he heads to the uh, the site of St Bartol's Church. There you see, look, and uh, it was demolished to the glory of God and demolished for the site of this office block in 1972. Remember, this is 1974, so they the built them quick, didn't they, back then? But it seems that Dracula is the head. Um, I can't remember the name of, that he's taken. Uh, oh, D.D. Denham. The Denham Group of Companies. And uh, Van Helsing said... Um, when they were looking at the photos of the people going in and out of Pelham House, there were one photo that didn't have anybody on, and they said, oh, he must have made a mistake, must the uh, fellow that took him. Um, but he says, no, he's a vampire. If that were not supposed to be D.D. Denham, um, but if he's a vampire, he wouldn't show up on film, like they don't show up in a mirror, they don't show up on film either. Um, uh, which, you know, it's not exactly true, is it? Because, you know... I don't know. Or oh, maybe it is. I don't know. But whatever, there's vampires in it. It's, it's fantasy. But uh, it wouldn't show up on film. So, you know, it was D.D. Denham going in there. So D.D. Denham is Dracula. So that's what we've we've established. So he's going to go there. This office block is uh, owned by the Denham group of companies. So in two years, Dracula's gone from being dust in a, in a grave to a, a chief executive of a major corporation. Or maybe he's just taken over it. Maybe Denham, you know was a real person, and Dracula's killed him and taken over. I don't know, it doesn't explain it. Uh, oh, this is where they're showing that, and this is where they're talking about that. Look. There's the uh, the doorway with nobody there, and it's a, it's a vampire. So, so he's going to go and see D.D. D. Denham, so that's what he does. Uh, the others, those are going to check out Pelham House, uh, they're going to keep an eye on it, it's casing the joint, as uh, the kids say. <laughs> so Jessica and Murray uh, are looking from one one area, and um, uh, Torrance is uh, and another chap are uh, looking from another area. Um, oh, Torrance goes back to his car and finds that uh, his driver or whatever is being killed, and then he gets shot. There we go. Boom! There's a sniper, and he gets shot to death. Um, Oh, this is Van Helsing doing his uh, doing his silver bullet, I think. There we go. Yeah, this is Van Helsing making his silver bullet. There we go. Should have gone to that shop in the Howling. He's could have got loads of silver bullets, couldn't he? <laughs> but never mind. I suppose Los Angeles is a bit far from uh, London in the seventies. Uh, anyway, this sniper that's just killed Torrance is taking pot shots at. Um, at uh, Murray and uh, Jessica, uh, but it, Murray decides that he's, he's missing them deliberately. He could have, uh, he could have uh, killed them at any time, but for some reason he's missing deliberately. Don't know why. He didn't miss Torrance, did he? Maybe it's Jessica. Yeah, it's because they want Jessica, don't they? It's like the last film in it because you know they want her for the ritual. So anyway, they get back to Torrance's car. They find everybody's dead, and um, uh, I think Murray gets knocked out or whatever, and the tech. The take, uh, Jessica. Right, so Peter Cushing arrives at the D, uh, Denham building and he goes in, talks to the security guard and says, oh, nobody sees Mr Denham. He says, I'm sure he'll see me. Tell him the name's Van Helsing. 
Uh, and then the phone rings, and we see there's a camera, a security camera, and the phone rings, and the the guard says, oh, you have to go straight up. And he said, you go in the lift and press the red button or whatever, the top button. That'll take you straight to his suite. Right, so then we cut back to the um, Pelham house. Um, uh, Muddy wakes up in the basement. Um uh, and that's what that's last we see of him for a minute. Yep. Oh, there's uh, Chin Yang's there. I think, I think she's a vampire here now as well. I think. But um, we we'll see what happens in a minute. Right. So uh, Van Helsing's heading up to the, uh, the 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 penthouse in the, the Denham building to his confrontation with D D Denham, who has a a thick uh, Eastern European accent for some reason. I didn't, he hadn't in any of the other films, has he? <laughs> when Dracula speaks, he just speaks normally. But in this one, he's got a very thick Eastern European accent, even though Denham doesn't seem a very European name, but never mind. Anyway, he sits down, look, and uh, you can see it's bloody Dracula, even though, even though they've got light in his eyes and stuff. You can see it's Christopher Lee. Anyway, they're talking away, being all polite and... Um, uh, Peter Cushing, sorry, Van Helsing, uh, pretends, you know, accidentally knocks these books off and um, uh, picks them up and puts the crucifix on uh, without, uh, um, or puts a Bible or something, something like that, on, on in, in with the books. And Denham, look, this is where he's going to do it. Denham says something and points with his hand. There we go, gets. Uh, Gets burnt by the Bible or the crucifix or whatever were there. So that's when he realises he is Dracula. You are Dracula. Can we mouth it? You are Dracula. <laughs> there we go. So anyway, he gets the uh, crucifix out and he gets his little gun with a silver bullet, but it's too late. The guard comes and knocks him out. And uh, Murray comes to in the basement. There he is. The Chin Yang. Uh, I think she tries to bite him. She's trying to hypnotise him. Look. Is she going to bite him? Are you ready? Is he going up? Teeth are going to come out. Or is she biting him? I can't remember. No, she don't. She nearly bit him. There we go. But he, uh, he resists. He resists. I think this is where he does the sprinklers. I think there he goes. Wraps her in a... Just happens to be a net there for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they like fishing. I don't know. But it just happens to be a net there. So he covers her in the net. Here the other vampire brides emerge. There you go. He's done the old uh, two pieces of wood make into a crucifix routine. Uh, there we go. And he sets the uh, sprinklers off. And they're all... So we get the, the camera changes. They make it look washed out. There you go. So they're all going to die of the clear running water. Ah. So that's the end of them. That's the end of them, thanks to Murray. There we go. Sprinklers. Hey, Jessica's been laid out on the altar. Uh, Murray comes to uh, to rescue her. But um needs to go upstairs for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, probably to deal with the security, I don't know. Anyway... Van Helsing's being brought in. He got knocked out by the security guard um, in the Denham building. He's being brought there. So all these, you know, all the high-level politicians, policemen, blah blah blah, they're all there. Uh, and Dracula's going to do his ultimate plan, and they're all going to die. And then they say, "Hang on, we're, we're not supposed to die." We're supposed to rule, oh, you know, and what do you mean, kill everybody? But uh, that's his plan. Uh, Murray sees it on the camera. Uh, and what happens here? Um, there you go. He's got the uh, a vial of the uh, the virus, and uh, I think he drink. I can't remember what he does with it now. So don't drink it. So I think he does drink it. And it immediately kills him, oh, more or less. 
Hey, we've got it there, look. Oh, does he crush it? I can't remember what happens. Oh, he's crushed it. So he's going to die. He goes all manky. But it's obviously not super contagious, because <laughs> it just kills him in a minute. But either way, Murray were having a fight with this uh, Afghan-wearing chap, uh, and he throws him into the electrical equipment, and it all blows up. Uh, and a fire starts, so that's how we start. we have a fire going. Um, so the Pelham house is going to burn down, uh, apart from the basement, obviously, because the sprinklers are going. <laughs> um, so they get anyway. So in the ensuing melee of the fire, um, Murray comes and grabs Jessica, and uh, Van Helsing has to face off against Dracula once more. Uh, Murray's running out with Jessica, getting her to safety. So that's them out of the way. So, um, Van Helsing uh, is to fight uh, Dracula and they end up outside. <clears throat> See, Murray's gone back in. Uh, are they? Are they? That is Murray, isn't it? What, uh, what's he gone back in for? See, I'm all confused. Oh, no, he can't get in. He goes back out again, I think, because the fire beats him back. Look, he can't, uh, he can't get in. There we see the, that's the... The other men that are burning to death, the high-ranking people of the cult. Yeah, so he goes back out. I think he thinks maybe Van Helsing and Dracula are dead as well. Probably. But no, they've gone outside. Uh, Van Helsing's chasing Dracula through some, uh, some woods. By the way, it was also established earlier in the film that Hawthorne can kill Dracula as well because that's what uh, Jesus' crown of thorns was made of. So I just thought I'd uh, say that, because I, I forgot about that earlier on. So Dracula's chasing um, Van Helsing for some reason, because it's Van Helsing. And Van Helsing's leading him into the uh, the Hawthorne woods, I suppose. Anyway, Murray's taking care of Jessica. I bet they get married. If they were gonna be a if it were gonna be a trilogy, I bet they'd be married in <laughs> the third film. But there isn't. I think the next one after this was um um, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which didn't have, oh, it did have Dracula in, but not as, not by Christopher Lee. Uh, and I don't know if it was connected with this. Uh, I've seen it once, I can't really remember much about it. Uh, so Van Helsing realises he's in some hawthorn bushes. Look, he's got snagged on the hawthorn. So he's like, oh, right, I know what to do now. He's going to lure Dracula into the hawthorn bushes. Uh, right. So that's what he does. He said, come on, Dracula, come and get me. Bad me, I'm over here. There he goes, saying it there, look. And Dracula says, oh, no, I'm not. Uh, but Van Helsing grabs one of these... Uh, grabs one of them uh, fence stakes. Uh, Dracula's stuck in the hawthorn. He's like, ah, I'm trapped, I'm trapped in, in this hawthorn, but I'm still going to try and get you because I'm like a... Like an animal that's being snared. That's what he's like. So Van Helsing gets the uh, goes and gets one of them wooden stakes. Just happened to be there. <laughs> it, uh, close at hand. Uh, and Dracula has always got out. Look, he's got out of the things, but he's not well. And he's still got some look, bits of hawthorn round his foot. And I think he's got some round his head as well. Yeah, so he, there you go. So he's uh, just like Jesus, look, sort of. Got his own crown of thorns. I'm guessing that's deliberate. Go on, get on with it, Van Helsing. Get the uh, get the wooden stake. Good job it was a wooden fence, isn't it? Not a metal one. <laughs> hey, go on. He's like, all oh, right. Uh, nah. I'd have been there for hours. I would have been there for pulling and tugging at that. But he got it out. And he's probably saying things to him like, you know, don't do it. No, but uh, he's going to. Not again. It's only two years ago been through all this before so anyway boo there we go i'm gonna see some uh red hammer claret no be not so there we go this is the last time we see uh christopher lee by the way as uh dracula look he's got a, a, a white eye his eyes turning white they went all out for it didn't they in this one uh, and this will be the last time we see Christopher Lee as uh, Dracula um, in the Hammer films. 
Um, and I don't think they were over impressed with this. Both Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee were not over impressed with these uh, these last two films. But they're my two favourites. I think they're great. So we're seeing this going on. And uh, that's the end of Dracula again. Uh, I don't know if he disappears this time. Maybe he does. We'll see. I can't remember. I did watch it. I've watched it, but I forget stuff and I'm old. <laughs> Uh, yes, he's disappearing. Look, he's he's turning to smoke. Yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, that happens. There he goes, turning to a skeleton, uh, and that's the end of Dracula again. But he does come back in Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, but just not not by Christopher Lee. Uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, I think Van Helsing there goes and. Um, you know, celebrates. I think that's it. I think that ends. Uh, oh, he picks up the ring, Dracula's ring. Remember that uh, Johnny Alucard had in the previous film to connect us to that film as well. And that's it. That's the end. Look, there you go. That's the end of that film. So there you go. So yeah, I do like that. That actually, Satanic Rites of Dracula, I think, is my favourite of the of the those two that we've just watched. I think Satanic Rites is my favourite. Um, but I do like uh, Dracula AD 1972, but only because that's got Carolyn Monroe and Stephanie Beach, I mean. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, I do like Satanic Rites of Dracula. I do like that one because it's a bit like, as I said, it's a bit like an episode of the new Avengers or or the Professionals with a, like Professionals has like a supernatural twist or something like that. One of those, you know, 70s cop shows it reminded me of. It's gritty. It's gritty and uh, quite gory in places, and it's 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 cool. I really like it. So we'll leave it there. Finally got it done with <laughs> after two weeks. I was supposed to do it last week, but there were problems. But uh, we got round it, and it's done now. So thank you for watching. I don't know what I'm doing next week. I haven't decided. We'll do a modern one, a more modern film, I think, next week. But I, don't, I haven't decided what yet. So we'll leave it there. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking at those those two films. My two favourite Dracula, Hammer Dracula films. You probably disagree. You probably say, you know, Dracula and Bride of Dracula and all that are your favourites. But uh, they're not mine. Those two are mine. Dracula AD 1972 and Satanic Rites of Dracula. For the win, in my opinion. Right, we'll leave it there. So thank you for watching. Um, and until next time, don't have nightmares, and I'll see thee. <laughs>